Fight fans all over the world, it's Daddy P on the corner, in the corner, boxing. What? Hey, Daddy P back with beef. Check it, look. Hey, the month of July, hey, is riddled with fights. We got some decent fights going on in the month of July. So, hey, this beef, hey, this episode of Beast is dedicated to the month of July. Hey, look, and I can't go without mentioning Regis Pro Grays versus Velasco. Look, this is a home going fight for Regis Pro Grays, and I'm going to tell you this right here. It's going to be on ESPN on July the 14th, and look, this is what makes it more interesting. The winner will be entering the World Boxing Super Series for the 140 pounds. Hey, World Boxing Super Series, they entering. Look, whoever win this fight between Pro Grays and Velasco, um, they going to the World Boxing Super Series for 140 pounds. You know what I'm talking about? Velasco is 20 and 0 with 12 KOs. And um, y'all already know Regis Prograce, he is the WBC interim title holder for 140 pounds. And he is 21 and 0 with 18 KOs. Now I'ma tell you this, man. Look. Regis Prograce, he really wanted to fight Ramirez. Um, because he's the interim title holder. Ramirez holds that WBC for the 140 pounds, the full world title. But man, look, by entering this World Boxing Super Series, if he can win on July the 14th, you know, hey, this could help him to win, you know, he could become a champion, man. Look, there's some belts there in that World Boxing Super Series to be had. So, so hey, I know he's looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to it. He's fighting the Artinian Velasco. You already know. They packed them punches coming from Argentina. You know what I'm talking about? Anyway, on to the next. I just mentioned Jose Ramirez. A lot of people giving him flack for not entering that World Boxing Super Series for the 140 pound tournament. The one I was just talking about for Regis Prograde. Listen, Jose Ramirez is fighting on July the 7th on ESPN. He fighting Danny O'Connor. You know what I'm talking about? Uh who everybody look at as being, man, look, that's this weekend coming up. They look at him as, as being, uh, Danny O'Connor as being very overmatched. Um, and a lot of people is like, man, why is this guy not entering into this Super World Boxing Super Series? But uh, it is what it is. He holds down that WBC World Championship strap for 140 pounds. But, uh, hey, he look like he holding on to it real tight. He ain't getting in no World Boxing Super Series. Anyway, on to the next. Manny Pacquiao, Lucas Mathis. Uh, the fight was looking a little shaky. Manny Pacquiao say, hey, look, everything is good. They done paid their money to, um, I guess it was old to M Golden Boy. But Lucas Mathis got his bread. They got that bread they were supposed to be getting. Manny Pacquiao say it's all good, so the money is secured. The fight will happen July the 14th on ESPN in Lumpur, Malaysia. Listen, this is for the 147 pound. Look, WBA, uh, they say subpar title. They, you know, it's called it, WBA called it the world title, but everybody know, man, it's basically like the WBA's version of an interim title. You know what I'm saying? Because that WBA Super is what, you know what I'm saying, you can go and unify with. Which is held down by none other than Keith Thurman. And this, the reason why this fight is very intriguing to me, because it's going to be very interesting to see what is going to go down if Keith Thurman don't get on the ball and fight. He was supposed to be coming back. It was rumored for August the 4th. Now, you know, you, you know we don't know when Keith Thurman coming back. I don't see much pressure for the w, from the WBA, but Manny Pacquiao, he fighting. Lucas Mathis is fighting. And when you have big names like, you know, Pacquiao, you know what I'm talking about? A legend already. You know what I'm talking about? He, pa he fighting way past his prime. He's still a legend. You have names like that, you know, sometimes, you know, 
hey, they get to trying to rush people. So they either might, I'm going to tell you, they could either elevate whoever win this fight out of Pacquiao and Matisse, or they can allow them to fight for the WBA if, if Keith Thurman don't get on the ball. Now, nah, this is just my speculation. You know what I'm saying? This is nothing that is in writing. I'm just saying the man ain't fighting. He already got stripped of that WBC or gave it up. Whatever, however you want to say it. He ain't got the WBC no more. But Keith Thurman does still have that WBA super. So, man, look, I don't know what's going to happen, man. Anyway, we back to it with some more of this beef. July the 21st, Alexander Usyk versus Marat Gassiel. Now, this is from the World Boxing Super Series. Um, this is like, hey, this is the last fight for him. Whoever win this thing right here, this happening in Russia, by the way. Whoever win this is going to be the undisputed cruiserweight champion of the 100. Wait a minute, not 100. 200 pound cruiserweight division. This for all the marbles, y'all. This for every belt, all the belts. The only thing is it was a special. Now listen, it was a special, um, I guess you would say, um, allowance for that WBA, which Marat Garciel snatched out of the hands of Dorty Coast. It was a special allowance because that belt was actually supposed to have been the WBA regular belt, not the Super. I was just talking about that. Um, but it was a special allowance made for that fight to be put on the line in this World Boxing Super Series. Now, nah, this is the thing. Whoever, if, if whoever wins this fight, if they want to keep that WBA strap as a unification strap, they're going to have to fight the, the guy who is WBA super. You know what I'm saying? In the cruiserweight division. But it is, they're going to have to fight him. I guess they give they giving the guy some kind of, you know, little paper, whatever. But uh, yeah, that cruiserweight division, that belt actually was supposed to be the regular belt. But um, they made a special allowance. But it is a guy who did hold that super. But next time, hey, I'm going to tell you. I'm gonna do a video for that fight. It's a couple more videos probably, you know, and I'm gonna do one on Rack Gossiev and I'm gonna let y'all know who it is. I can't remember. It's the guy that fought um, Roy Jones Jr. and knocked him out. You know what I'm saying? He a cruiserweight. Matter of fact, I think Marat Gossiev already beat him before. I can't think of his name right now. But anyway, I, I'll get back to that. Uh, you know, I ain't gonna leave you hanging. Anyway, beef. Look, <laughs> I got to mention my man now. Look, I can't go without mentioning my man, Jaime Munguia. Look, the WBO 154 pound WBO huh, world title holder, Jaime Munguia. Y'all know he beat Saddam Ali for that WBO strap at 154. But anyway. It's going down, man. Listen, he fighting Liam Smith, who is his mandatory. Hey, y'all take notes. All y'all champions, man, who around here holding down these belts and skipping over mandatories and all that, man. This young man just got this strap. Just got it. The strap ain't even hot yet around his waist. And he fighting his mandatory. Y'all take notes. You know what I'm saying? All these guys who like the duck mandatories and stuff. Y'all check him out now, Jaime Munguia, young man, 21 years old. He hold that 154 pound WBO strap. And the boy in fight, look, man, this young, it's a big, now this a big 154. The guy, 21 years old, stands six foot. He is still raw, but at the same time, that young man is excited, hey, and he feel invincible. He got this opportunity and he taking it up. He say, I'm going to fight whoever. I'm, hey, he talking about going to 160 and fighting Triple G and all that. Canelo. <coughs> anyway, the young man is, uh, look, hot guy, man. Look, anyway, they, he fighting on July the 21st. This is going to be on HBO. So y'all check it out, man. 
Also, on July the 28th, B, Mikey Garcia versus Robert Easter Jr. Now, y'all know this is a PBC, Premier Boxing Champion. You know, I think this one on Showtime. A little bit closer, you know, I'm going to be doing some videos on both guys, Mikey Garcia and Robert Easter Jr. And I will give you more specifics. But yeah, this is a PBC right here, man. A lightweight showdown unification fight for the WBC and the IBF World Championships. Listen. Hey, Mikey Garcia, man, they like <laughs> favor everybody favoring him to win. They kind of looking over Robert Easter Jr. But I'm going to tell you, man, I guess they look talking about how he been looking the last couple fights. But man, this young man is, um, look. He had two fight, awkward fights, man. And when you fight, like, when you fight in South Paul, it's going to be awkward anyway. But, you know, he fought two awkward guys in a row. So, I mean, the man kind of, you know, hey, Mikey Garcia is not an awkward guy. He, he's, um, he's very technical, but he's not very awkward. But he is very technical, and um, he does got skills to pay the bills. Robert Easter Jr. has a long reach, though, and, um, you know, he got that height. But this is the thing. He does not stand behind the height. He fights a lot on the inside. But I'm going to tell you, the fight might look a little different than people thinking because you remember he fought. He, look, everybody talking about my man, the one who talking about he hurt his neck and all that, you know. <laughs> the man who... Uh, Javier Fortuna, that's who we fought last. Um, you know, and Javier Fortuna just fought and talking about he hurt his neck and all that and bowed out. Hey, I'm not picking at the man. I hope he's all right. But this the thing. He is kind of a, I'm going to say, I ain't going to say like straight, straight up dirty, but he does do some, use some, some, uh, you know, hey, some shallow tactics in that ring. And he is very, he's not only elusive, he's just very awkward, man. As a, He's a southpaw to begin with, and he is also a very awkward guy. He's a very slick boxer as well. But uh, the guy, you know, hey, Robert Easter Jr., when he fought him, I'm going to tell you this, I felt like Robert Easter Jr. did enough to win to secure the fight. It was close. But um, I'm gonna tell you, to me, Robert Easter Jr. made some adjustments, and Fortuna began to try to tie him up for a lot of them rounds. And Robert Easter Jr. made some adjustments, man, and he started landing. So hey, whatever it is, Robert Easter Jr. is the IBF lightweight champion. Hey. And I'm gonna tell you, I think this fight gonna look a lot different. I think it's gonna be a close fight, too. I think a lot of people, <coughs> they overlooking Robert Easter Jr., but I think he's going to make a good showing of himself, win or lose. <clears throat> anyway, that's beef, but I cannot, hey, look, I got another one. Joseph Parker versus Dillian White. Listen, hey, it's happening in the O2 Arena in London, England, July 28th now. Listen, this is not a unification, uh, any kind of title fight, but uh, these two gentlemen both have in common that they lost to Anthony Joshua. Hey, and they, they both trying to get, you know, keep their name hot and stay busy. So, you know, um, Dillian White is coming off a win over Lucas Brown. Y'all know that. He knocked him out. And, um... The thing is, Joseph Parker is coming off of a loss, you know, to Anthony Joshua. And both of these guys have lost to Anthony Joshua. The difference is, Dillian White got knocked out by Anthony Joshua. You know? And Joseph Parker did. So, I don't know. I think this is a good uh, selling point for the fight. Hey, it's going down. O2 Arena, man. Look, 28th of July. And uh, I think it's a good heavyweight bout. And both guys staying busy. That's what I like to see. You know? And both of them heavyweights. Both of them staying busy. Hey, I like it. 
it's good boxing to me. I'm I'm surely gonna tune in and watch it. I'm, I gotta find out how to watch that fight, man. Them, them fights over there, you know, skybox. I ain't, you know, I don't got my fire stick no more, so I gotta figure out how to watch it. But anyway, whatever happened, man. Look, I believe it's gonna be a good fight, and um, I can't wait to check it out. I think it's gonna be good boxing. So anyway, man, the month of July is full of fights, full of beef. And um, hey, it's going down, y'all. It's starting out on July the 7th. So hey, y'all y'all hang with your boy. I'm going to be doing these videos. And I'm also going to, y'all know I give you highlights of these fights, man. I give you like a little brief analysis and a couple little highlight snippets of the fight. If something exciting go down in them, I try to get them to you as soon as possible, like a knockdown or a knockout. I'm going to give it to you, you know? And uh, I'm going to get it to you as fast as I can. Now, y'all know I cannot give you the whole fight, and I can't give you, like, long stretches of the fight. I have a channel that's suspended right now for giving too much I like, you know, so I can't do it. But uh, I will give you some a brief analysis and also i give you like what's going on during the fight what happened during the fight like some little brief snippets of the highlights this daddy pete on the corner in the corner boxing go ahead and subscribe to the channel hit the bell icon so you can be notified every time it goes down this daddy pete slap that like button for me i'm talking my pimp slap that mug daddy pete out